So we have gained root with Metasploit, but now we need to gain root with some manual exploitation. So remember earlier, we discovered that we had an exploit with our mod SSL, and we're gonna see what we could do about it. So we went to Google and we researched mod SSL and we came up with something called open luck, if you remember that. So we clicked on this open luck here and this is the same as the one that is out there on exploit database, but it is fixed. So remember the exploit database one is broken, so we'd rather use this one that is fixed. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the instructions here. And this is very well laid out. So it tells you to git clone this, we need to do an install of an SSL dev library, we need to compile and then run the exploit. So very, very straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and do exactly what it says. And let's go ahead and just copy this first line here. And I'm going to just make this a little smaller, go into a terminal. And I actually have a folder for Keoptrix. I'm gonna CD into it. And then we're going to go ahead and just paste that line. And it will get clone everything. If we LS, now we see that it is there. So let's CD into that folder the bad word folder and we'll ls and now you can see that there is uh, just the c file here in the readme so what we're going to do is we need to install this lib ssl dev so we're going to say apt install and then lib ssl dash dev like this hit enter and then just hit enter because it says yes already this will take just a second to install and then once it does this, we're going to use a tool looks like called GCC, which GCC is a compiler. So if you've never used C or are familiar with C, we have a C file, but this isn't ready to use. We have to compile that C file in order to actually use it. So that's what we're doing here is we're downloading a little bit of stuff to actually be able to compile that. Um, GCC is built in and we just needed some other things uh, additionally. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say GCC and Typically you say dash O for the output, so we can call it whatever we want. Uh, we'll just call this open, and then we'll just specify the file. You can start typing it and then tab out. And then it says this L crypto, which is important. Hit enter, okay, and then hit LS. And you see now in pretty green, green lighting up and saying, hey, we're executable, we have our are executable, right? We have our, our uh, script that we can run. So we could say dot forward slash open and run it. And you can see in here all the different options that this runs against. So you remember when it was brute forcing um, the last one when we saw the we saw the trans to open was kind of doing brute force. Uh, in theory, this is what it could do as well. But here we actually have to pick a return address based on our machine. So we're gonna look at the usage. I always like to do the um, application without any usage to see what the usage is. And we need to use target box, which is one of these down here. We need to select a port, maybe it says for SSL connection, we're not gonna be using an SSL connection, so don't worry about that. And then a dash C number, and it says use range 40 to 50 if you don't know. So our syntax is gonna look something like dot forward slash open, one of these offsets that we're gonna pick, and then it's going to be a dash C, probably 40, uh, with the box IP address in between. So how do we find what we're looking for? Well, I'm gonna cheat just a little bit and tell you guys to scroll down, 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 down. And if we look at 6B here, remember, we were up against Apache 1.3.20. See, enumeration comes into play big time. So Apache 1.3.20. Now there are two we can run against. I'm picking this one. I believe it's the more, more stable one. Um, so we could pick either one, but I would choose B. I think A doesn't work all the time. So let's choose B here. And Apache 1.3.20 is the indicator. And again, Red Hat Linux, so that's another indicator. So let's copy this so we don't forget it. And we're just going to scroll down and we're going to say, hey, dot forward slash open. 
and we're going to paste that 0x6b. And then we're going to run this against the IP address because it said box was next. So 134. And then remember we had to give a dash C of 40. So that is the syntax. Sometimes you have to follow along and it's, I don't, I don't think most of them are as confusing as this. I don't, when you say this is confusing, I would just say it's pretty lengthy for a exploit because you have to go through all the different offsets here to find the offset and actually fire this off. Um, but you know, you have the opportunity here to actually be able to read usage and just understand your, your way through it. So, um, once you get this little syntax and all this part down, it's really not that bad. So to check off the list, we've got the target. We got the box IP address. We don't need the port because we're not running against SSL. Uh, we're just going to run this against port 80 and then we're going to run dash C of 40. So let's go ahead and try to fire that off and see what happens here. And this may just take a second. Okay, it says it's spawning a shell. Now we wait for the SUID. Let's scroll up just a little bit while we're waiting here to see. So it looks like it sent the shell code and it spawned a shell. And it says, hey, we have no job control in this shell. And then it, it has a shell here, bash 2.05, that is a shell. And then it's going in and it's doing, um, it's doing some W gets. Now, if this is able to get out to the internet, it's going to go ahead and try to do W gets against these. Uh, it's going to keep downloading and it's going to get the response here. OK. And now it says we wait for the shell because it saved this dot C file here. And let's see if maybe we already have a shell. Who am I? Root. Look at that. So it looks like it downloaded something and allowed us to maybe privilege escalate here. Um, and let's say host name. OK, so we've gone through and we've rooted this machine with Metasploit and now we've gone through and rooted this machine with the manually downloaded exploit. So there's two options. Uh, you're going to find out that Metasploit is a more robust and popular option, especially as a penetration tester. Now, there is a common misconception or uh, thought process put out there by certifications. Um, the OSCP, for example, doesn't let you use a lot of Metasploit, only one instance of Metasploit on their exam. So everybody thinks, man, I, I really shouldn't use Metasploit. But you're going to see in this course how useful it really is and how robust it is. And if you talk to a penetration tester, they're going to use the best tools available to them. Um, the certifications out there that do that are just making it harder to pass the exam intentionally than they are you know, for practicality. This course is all about practicality. So from here, now that we've exploited it manually, let's talk about a couple things that we look for in post. So post being post exploitation, and we're gonna cover this over and over and over again. We're not gonna get into it fully right now. I just wanna give you an idea as to the thought process. So the first thing to think about is what is our IP address? Um, we could say ifconfig if it'll allow us to. It, does, it depends on what kind of shell we're in. And see, this one is, is a weird shell. We could try IPA. It's still not going to be found. Um, if we try some, some commands like ARP or route, I doubt they're going to be found right now either. But we want to look at like the routing table, the ARP table. We want to see if this machine is what's called dual homed. And you're going to learn more about that when we get into the pivoting. But if this, is, this has like two NICs, and we're on one network and the NIC is on a second network that we never saw before, then maybe we can do something called pivoting and move into that new network. Um, but we would be able to identify who the machine's talking to with an ARP table or a route. Um, we could also look at like pseudo privileges. So we could say something like pseudo dash L, but we are root, so we can run as everybody. So if, uh, a pseudo user, as we talked about in Linux, uh, Linux lessons, Pseudo user is able to run commands as uh, elevated, um, but here as root, we're already, obviously already elevated. So um, other things that we can do, we can cat what's called the Etsy password file. 
Now, this is very misleading because the Etsy password file used to be the password file. Uh, now it just holds a placeholder. So you could see all the users that are on this computer, root being this one. There's a lot of built-in users here, um, but if you always scroll down to the bottom and you start at the 500s, that's where your users start. So there's actually two users on this computer as well. One's named John, the other's named Harold. So we look at these users and we say, okay, well, there's no password in this password file, but there used to be. Back in the day, there used to be. That's why they call it this. Uh, and now they moved it to this placeholder of an X. And what we can do is we can come in here and we can say, hey, cat Etsy shadow. And now you see the hashes are in here. So these hashes are what the X is placeholding for. We can actually combine both of these files with the tool and go offline and try to crack these. We'll work on that later on in the course. But just for now, like getting your wheels spinning on as to what we can do with root level access, um, we need to start enumerating again, looking at files on the computer, seeing what what's out there and what we can do with it. Uh, but we'll get into post exploitation techniques and thought process as we go through the Active Directory portion of the course, because I think it plays hand in hand. And we can talk about password cracking there and how to attack some of this stuff. But there will be a password cracking video on on uh, Linux as well when we get into the post exploitation phase of this. But that's really it for now. So we've got the we've got the shadow. We could take this offline, try to crack it. We can enumerate files. We can try to, you know, break into user folders and see what they've got in there. Maybe they've got password files stored in there, etc. So from here, we have rooted this machine twice. We rooted it with Metasploit, we rooted it manually, and now we can start moving on. I do wanna show you a few more attacks. So here's what's gonna happen over the next few videos. We're gonna talk about brute force attacks really quick on SSH. We're gonna talk about credential stuffing. We're gonna revisit that concept that we talked about in information gathering. And then we're gonna look at our notes and we're just gonna compare notes and see where we're at with findings and everything else. After that, we're gonna get into what I like to call the mid course capstone which is going to allow us to do a bunch of exploitation against a bunch of machines, and it should be really fun. So end of spiel again. I will catch you over in the next video as we talk about brute force attacks.